Hello Math 133 students. I'm going to help you a little bit in these video tutorials with task number three in project two. Namely, I'm in particular going to remind you of these chapter two topics, which is how to construct a frequency distribution and how to construct a frequency histogram, both with Excel. And again, I reiterate, these were first taught in section 2.2. So if you go back to those sections, you can look them over. Now I have a data set from section 2.2, which is wait times. And I'm going to use this data set to show you what you need to do for your project. But of course, it's not the exact same as your project because it's a different data set. All right, so let's see here. I have wait time. So what I want to do is I first want to make it wide enough so I can fit the word wait time. So I'm going to have my mouse kind of hover between the A and the B. So it hovers over that line between the two columns. And you can see that the cursor turns into a double-sided arrow. So then you double click when it does that. And there you go. It's nice and wide. Okay, now I want to sort this data set into order for myself because I have a whole bunch of data here and I want to make sure that I have it from lowest to highest because that'll be give me, give me the beginning and end of my frequency distribution. So I'm going to click on the letter A kind of up here. It turns the cursor turns into a double or excuse me, a down arrow. And I click and it'll highlight the entire column A. And then I go click on data. I'm going to click A to Z. And there we go. I've got the lowest to the highest. So I can see my lowest value is 3 and my highest value is 14. All right, so I'm going to go create a frequency distribution. First thing I'm going to do, these were wait times um, for customers. So I'm going to type what it was for me. You would type a title for you. All right, so wait times. And I'm going to type 3, 4, 5, and so on. And you keep typing and you keep adding 1 no matter what until you get to the highest number you have in your data set, which in my case was 14. So 13, 14. The other way to do that, the faster way, honestly, than typing it, is you type the first one, which is my in my case 3, but who knows what it's going to be for you. So 3, and then I type equals, click on that cell D2, and then I say I want to add 1 to it. And then I can click on that cell and drag it down all the way. And, it, and if you keep going, you can drag a whole bunch. I, did, I messed that up, sorry. There, D2 plus 1, drag it down, and so on. And you can see that if you drag it far enough, you'll actually go far past what you need. That's okay. You just kind of highlight the cells you don't need and press delete, and then they'll go away. And then they're nice and empty. All right, so now I have the wait times. That's fabulous. And now I need the frequency because it says to make a frequency distribution. So frequency. And for this, you just need to count. So you count how many threes you had, two, and then how many fours, three. And if you're really crafty about it, you can see what I'm doing. I'm highlighting and clicking and holding down on that mouse button. And the bottom right corner, it actually says count three. It's letting me know there were three in that group, count three in the next group, and so on. So it's letting me know in that bottom right corner how many there are of each kind. So this was five, this five was three, four was three, three was two, and so on. And then you go through and you look at each one and you're making a frequency distribution. You're saying there were seven has a frequency of four, eight has a frequency of, oh, eight's going to happen a lot, eight. So four, eight. And if there are any that don't occur, you just put a zero there. That's all right but you don't want to skip them. So you want to make sure that you have every possible value between your lowest and your highest. And if any of them don't occur in the data set, then you just put a zero. For example, I'm going to put a zero for 12. So 10 was four, 11 was four, and then 12 was zero. So four, four, zero. 13 was two and 14 was one. Now, if you did this correctly, the sum, so if I type equal sum of that column that we just made, that frequency column, that should be equal to how many times you did the item. So like in our case, I think it's rolling a die. Um, so, or how many trials we had. So, and then in this particular instance, it's how many data points there were, which is 40. There we go. So you can see there's 40 rows. It says count is 40 for me. So that means that I had 40 trials for my experiment. Yours will be different for your problem. 
right so down here I'm gonna write the word total so I don't get confused and think that that's part of the data because it's not all right and now we want to make this pretty especially since we're gonna to have to turn this in so I'm going to highlight the whole table click up on the borders menu and I'm gonna click all borders and that adds a nice little border to it and then I actually have this zoomed in quite a bit so let me zoom out so you can see there it's actually quite small so if you want to make it so that it shows up nice when you have to go print it um, I would recommend increasing your font size first of all and then oh, look what happens see how the frequency and the wait times got smushed in there so have your mouse highlight the area between D and E see how it turns into that double-sided arrow double click and there it makes it nice and wide and we should bold these as well because they're titles I might need to double click again there we go. And if you'd like, you can even make them centered or not. You know, that's up to you. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'm going to because it looks prettier. All right, now let's go back to the project. It says construct a frequency distribution and attach it to the back of the packet. Okay, so let's look here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this table right here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to wait on the printing. Hold on, we'll go back and we'll do the histogram and then I'll show you how to print in the next video. Yes, because you're gonna have to print the histogram and the table. So we'll wait on that and we'll print at the end of the next video. So this video showed you how to construct your table. It's pretty straightforward. Your data set of course will be different and don't forget to put zeros in for any place that's empty. But you wanna make sure you go from lowest to highest with a step of one. So four, five, six, seven, and so on. All right, I'll see you in the next video when I make a histogram.